The Northern Alaska Environmental Center wants to cut its heating bills and update its exterior. But what style should they go with? And will retrofitting the building really save them that much money? Is there an inexpensive method? We'll find out today on Alaska Energy Fit. The Northern Alaska Environmental Center is a nonprofit organization. Their building is a converted residential home built in 1969, a time when little thought was given to energy conservation and insulating techniques were rather crude. It has had several additions and renovations since then. With the increases in the cost of energy, the building's energy bills have risen dramatically. Now the Environmental Center is looking for a way to use less fuel. Currently, the building requires about 2,100 gallons of fuel oil per year to heat the main building and a small rental cabin at the back. At $4 a gallon, that's $8,400 a year. To cut expenses, we want to retrofit the building to save energy, money, and give it a more modern look. Forty years has taken its toll on the building, and construction technology has changed and the center could probably use an upgrade. I think it's important for the Environmental Center to use less oil. Um, like any business we want to reduce our operating costs and we are and we have more money for other things if we're not spending it on on heating expenses so we expect this retrofit certainly to affect our heating oil uh, but budget but we also think it's going to affect our uh, you know less so uh, it's going to affect our uh, utility bill we went to the cold climate housing research center to learn more about retrofitting a building well, the Coal Climate Housing Research Center was uh, actually established by the housing industry originally in Alaska to address issues of sustainability, issues of energy efficiency, issues related to our built environment and best practice. We have a stock of older homes in the Fairbanks area and throughout the state that are in uh, you know, very dire need of extensive energy retrofitting. The Coal Climate Housing Research Center's real goal is to get these technologies, uh, to get these ways of making your home more energy efficient out to the public. Uh, we've done a great deal of research here on best practice and on ways to reduce energy costs. The Research Center gave us some advice on building efficiency, retrofitting, and how to tell what parts of the structure need work. The shell of the building is called the envelope. Finding out just how efficient the envelope really is will require an energy audit. First, UAF research engineer Jack Schmidt will conduct a thermal sweep with an infrared camera. An infrared scan is not part of a typical energy audit, but it will help the analysis. This thermal sweep works best on a cold day. Unfortunately for the participants, today happens to be extremely cold. Well, Carl, I've uh, brought the infrared camera over to take a look at the building, and uh, this is essentially it's a non-contact temperature measuring device. I can take a picture of the building and get an idea of what what the surface temperatures are of, uh, of the whole face of the building and from that we might get some information about where uh, we're losing energy out of the building. A thermal imaging camera takes pictures of heat on the surface of objects. The photos look like a psychedelic art piece but can say a lot about which parts of the building are warm and which are cold. Jack will start by getting an overall image of the building and then closer images on each face. Next, he'll focus on anything he thinks is an anomaly. Right away, Jack sees a significant problem with the building's foundation. The concrete has no outside insulation and appears much warmer than the rest of the building, which means heat loss. Whatever energy it takes to keep that, uh, that foundation about uh, 10 to 15 degrees warmer uh, than the rest of the house, 
That's how much energy you're pumping out. After that chilly work outside, Jack and I move indoors to take more photos. Well, that's really interesting with the, uh, wow. with the corner being like... Mm -hmm. Phil Loudon of Arctic Technical Services is conducting an energy rating using a blower door. An energy rating is a comprehensive analysis of a building's energy use. So we look at all manner of uh, energy use in the building and what is lost through walls, uh, building components like walls and the roof and the floor. And uh, we, we look at the heating system for its efficiency rating and whether the building is tight, uh, airtight, and if it is tight, does it have a ventilation system and what kind of ventilation. So it's an integrated uh, uh, composite, mm -hmm. right, of how the building uses energy. For the blower door test, Phil's team will attach a large fan in the doorway of the building. The fan will blow outward, sucking all the air out of the building. As a result, air will be pulled into the building through all the cracks in the walls, roof, and other areas. These areas could mean insufficient insulation or a variety of other problems that lead to heat loss. An air current tester will help visualize the flow of air so workers will know what parts of the building need maintenance. With air blowing into the building, the leaky areas become quite obvious with the help of a little puff from the air current tester. We have the house under negative pressure and just pulling air in from the outside. So this smoke is being pushed away from this outlet. You can see the air pushing in through this hole. While the blower is still on, a quick visual inspection reveals a lot of leakage in the building, some more obvious than others. Well, this one is an, an obviously leaky window because uh, we can see that the, the glass is broken. Ice and, and broken panes. Metal frame. And metal frame. Metal frame, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's real old technology. Metal yeah. frame is Ooh. not something we want to see in this country. Good window. Oh, yeah. Poor We're ceiling sealed. job. Yeah. And the presence of mold. You see mm -hmm. where that cool surface is creating a place for moisture and condensing, so that black mold is growing there. Again, not a good thing. There's just a poorly weather stripped door. And look how much air is coming in there. Hear the paper fluttering in the breeze? You can see it? That's I don't have Parkinson's. That's that's uh, <laughs> that's air movement coming right through that uh, unweather stripped yeah. door. You can see here that there's not much there's not much blowing through these cracks. Well a little bit right there. But you can tell that air is moving through there because you can see the color changes here. This is dust and dirt. When we come back, we'll get the results of the thermal scan and the blower door test, and later, the retrofit gets underway. We'll be right back. With the thermal scan and blower door test completed, I sat down with each party to see some of the results. A plug in a hole with the First, Jack Schmidt and I went over the thermal dirt. camera images at his office. White areas on here. Dark spots on the thermal images represent cold areas, while light spots represent warm areas. Here we see the building's foundation is much warmer than other parts of the building, and much warmer than it should be. We're noticing the foundation under the siding. Is, is quite a bit warmer than the, uh, the ambient temperature. Now that means that a lot of heat is being lost to the air, is that correct? Right. Whatever energy it takes to keep that, that concrete foundation 15 or 20 degrees warmer than the outside air, that's how much energy you're losing. This image shows the existing garage door with dramatic heat loss. At the other end of the building was another garage door that had been replaced several years ago by a stud wall to increase office space. This shows less heat loss, but the wooden studs and plates are still areas of concern. On the inside of the building, the dark spots represent cold air coming inside. Here we see cold air coming in along the corner of the room where the roof line meets the wall, and more cold air coming in through an electrical outlet. Where would this fit in, uh, an infrared evaluation? Where would it fit in with uh, an overall evaluation of the building? Is this the best bang for the buck, or, or is this the first thing you would do? or? Or is this something, like you said, they just corroborate other it, information? I, I think it, it corroborates it. it sometimes it can, um, it can uncover things that weren't seen initially. Uh -huh. But uh, by far the most economical thing is a trained pair of eyes, someone with experience in buildings. Uh -huh. uh, 
because there are lots of signs in buildings that can can lead you to things that uh, uh, that need to be taken care of, and that's that's the most economical uh, way to do your first assessment. Next, I sat down with Phil Loudon to get the results of the blower door test. The blower door test actually gives us a uh, quantification of air leakage for the building, so we can actually. Uh, see how leaky the building is and estimate what percentage of the heating costs of the structure goes to air leakage, mm -hmm. uh, cold air leaking in, hot air leaking out during winter months. Okay. Phil and other energy raters use a software program called Acquarm to produce a report on the home. The Improvement Options Report prioritizes those issues for retrofit right, okay. to make a building more energy efficient, which, which uh, options give the best and most rapid payback. In the Environmental Center's case, based on the priorities of the report, Phil recommends installing a setback thermostat. Yeah. The thermostat itself turns down at night when there are no people in the building, and this $60 item could save $200 a year. Next, he suggests caulking and sealing windows, doors, and other cracks in the building. Estimated costs of $250 can possibly save us $550 yearly. Adding additional insulation to the walls and above ground is the next option. The walls are a large area and would be expensive to fix, but give tremendous savings. Foam insulation costs $3,400, with an estimated savings of $1,175 per year. So what we have is we have the walls and doors uh, being the highest loss area, mm -hmm. and that's an estimated cost of about $1,000 a year mm -hmm. right, for energy that pours through the walls. Yeah. Phil also recommends installing low-flow faucets to cut down on water consumption and save heat and electricity. Finally, education, so the occupants know the best ways to save heat and power in their everyday activities. A common misperception about retrofits is that the first thing you should replace is windows. However, they represent only a small part of the surface area of the building and are very costly to replace and don't save very much. Our energy rating shows we will get some savings by replacing the windows, and the visual inspection showed some of them were both inefficient and in poor repair. The report also shows the savings to cost ratio, installation cost, annual savings the building could get as a result of the renovation, the break-even cost, and the number of rating points the building would gain. Phil says our building could gain enough points to move up to a five-star structure. Once summer hits, we're ready to get started. Ian Abair stopped by to inspect the building and give a little advice on the retrofit. The first thing he notices is also the concrete foundation. You've got a concrete block foundation and it doesn't yeah. have any insulation on yeah. it. And one way I've heard that described is going outside in the middle of winter without your pants on. That's <laughs> so. Uh, that's yeah. definitely something that can be addressed through foam right. and some type of siding. The building also presents a number of other unique challenges. There are two different concrete foundations and a third wood foundation under the garage. The garage roof also has some tricks. We're not entirely sure why, why the wall juts out here, but what this was is that at one point the original roof, which was underneath this line where the beige aluminum siding is, was in one way or another leaking or wasn't getting enough ventilation. So they put in an extra roof above it so that it could ventilate the top roof. Um, why the carpenter had it built out two inches, I'm not entirely sure, but it's something that we can deal with. There also are various wires poking out in different places, from electricity to internet to telephone. It's a really small fuel line, but it's a yeah. copper fuel line. Ian also provides advice on proper window installation, working around the decks and stairways, and roof maintenance. The Cold Climate Housing Research Center suggests using a remote wall in the building. Remote is a building technique where insulation is applied to the outside of the wall. The technique was developed and tested in Alaska at the research center. But retrofitting the building will take time and money. To pay for the job, the Environmental Center has approached a bank for financing. The loan we secured was for $17,500 at 7% for 10 years for a payment of approximately $175 monthly. With that money, the center will pay for the retrofit and then pay back the loan with the money it saves on fuel oil. As their commercial bank, we provide deposit and loan services in this particular transaction, we were able to assist the Northern Alaska Environmental Center with their energy uh, improvements and finance those improvements over a repayment term that more or less allowed for the energy savings to offset the payment amount each month. Banks are very open to retrofit home improvement loans, which are growing in number. We 
do quite a few property improvement loans, both energy related and additions and renovations. But we're getting more and more requests for energy related financing, both commercial and residential. We're happy to be part of the energy saving effort here in Fairbanks. When we come back, the retrofit process gets underway. And I get really messy. Alaska Environmental Center has received its loan and it's time to get started retrofitting the building. We've decided to replace some older leaky windows and add more insulation in the roof. The walls will also get more insulation by wrapping the outside of the building in foam and applying a stucco finish. We chose stucco for aesthetic reasons but we could also have gone with clapboard, aluminum, steel or vinyl siding, buffalo hides or even chicken feathers had we wished. The bare concrete foundation walls are one of the leakiest parts of the house. Fortunately, applying insulation to the outside of the concrete gives the most payback, is one of the simplest remedies, and the materials are fairly inexpensive. To get started, the team and I dig down a couple feet to prep the walls for foam. The foam should extend down at least two feet into the ground. On new construction, the whole basement wall should be foamed down to the footings, and foam should also be installed on grade prior to pouring the floor. Carl, we also remove the old siding, which will be reused on a different house. And I noticed some additional problem areas when we remove the window trim. We have this nice pink insulation here that was stuffed in between the frame wall and the window, which is great, took up that space nicely. But this black indicates that's dirt, dust from the inside that came out with the air moving, moving between the window and the frame of the building. So there's been air leakage, around, even though it's well insulated, um, this, this you know, prevents heat conduction, but you still have air movement through it. With the old siding removed, we reveal the building's black sheathing. A layer of Tyvek drain wrap is applied to wick away any moisture that might get behind the foam or that may condense from inside the building. Any seams are taped over. Then comes the first two inch layer of foam tacked in place with 16 penny nails. The second layer of foam overlaps all the seams of the first and is held on with 6 inch screws. Each screw is fitted with a plastic washer and is drilled through each layer of foam and directly into the studs. Trying to hit the studs with the nails and the old studs coming through. And stuck up tight. The older windows are replaced to comply with code and help fuel efficiency. First, each window is insulated and caulked. Next, a strip of Vicor impermeable membrane is applied to seal the crack between the window and the frame. Then the layer of Tyvek drain wrap is applied. A fiberglass mesh is applied to hang over the edge of the windows and wrap around the first and second layers of foam. Next, the entire building is mudded in a cement acrylic base coat for strength. Take one part adhesive compound, add some Portland cement, and blend to a buttery goodness. You want to lick the batter? <laughs> Mm 
The fiberglass mesh is mudded to the wall with the base coat, which completely seals every crack. And for the last messy step, we sand down any rough parts of the concrete exterior. The windows are taped off to protect them from mess and also to provide a decorative trim. Finally, an acrylic color coat of stucco is applied in the same way the concrete mud was put on. The stucco may be very messy, but it dries quickly and provides the final seal and the aesthetic look for the outside of the building. Um, if you do hit it with a vehicle, it's not such a good idea, but uh, otherwise, no, it does not come off. No. So unless you get water forever? Yeah, <laughs> unless you get water penetrating behind it. I mean on your nose. Oh, on my nose? That part on your nose, is that going to stay there? Well, you're going to wash that <laughs> off for me, right? <laughs> Two days ago, we applied the finished coat of stucco to uh, most of the building. We still have to do the reveal around the windows. We're going to do that with a different color to make it look like a wooden trim. This is a fairly rough coat here. Uh, but rather solid, very long lasting. It's very impervious to air movement and it's a wonderful barrier. Great, great option for uh, an external retrofit on a home or a business. Lastly, we add more blown cellulose insulation into the ceiling, which is a dirty job to say the least. Because the techniques we use to retrofit the building make the envelope tighter, we consulted the Cold Climate Housing Research Center for advice on how this might affect the rest of the building. What's important for people to understand that is when they do do a retrofit, that the building is a system. If you do tighten the building up, it's going to be important to, to consider ventilation and indoor air quality with the tightening of the envelope, because obviously there won't be as much natural air coming in. So in any... Uh, any um, strategy that an individual might take on their home, it's a good idea for them to get some professional advice on what the implications will be and the effect on the rest of the structure. As you can see, the tools required are simple and inexpensive, and some of them can be made for pennies. The process is time consuming with lots of preparation, accurate measuring, and cutting of foam, and the stucco option requires tedious application of the base and finish coats. Wood or vinyl or steel siding may be a quicker option, but not necessarily cheaper. None of the work requires any great skill or strength. In fact, several folks dropped by during the course of the project and volunteered their time in exchange for learning how to do this and are now performing their own energy makeovers. With the retrofit done, what does the building look like? And how much is the environmental center saving on its heating bills? We'll find out right after this. With the retrofit of the Northern Alaska Environmental Center completed, it's time to see how much money we've saved on energy. Jack Schmidt returned to the building to take another round of infrared photos. The difference is remarkable. This time there is very little in the way of heat leaking out, especially through the foundation. Phil Loudon also conducted a second blower door test to see how much we reduced air leakage and how big an improvement our retrofit made. By adding the four inches of insulation to the exterior walls, by air sealing the uh, attic and windows, and improving the efficiency of some windows by replacing them uh, with good quality fiberglass units, the, uh, the rating still has gone up admirably. I, I see only a few areas where you could improve further without going to a longer payback term. I could dig a ditch. According to the post rating, the environmental center improved from a three-star plus to a four-star plus building 
and is just a tad below reaching five star. If this was a typical Alaskan home, the homeowners would receive $5,500 back through the state's rebate program. We had a quote to have all the work done by a contractor. His price, including all the foam and stucco products and labor, was $28,500. A loan for that amount would have cost about $290 per month. Since we wish to have the loan paid by the savings and fuel costs, and since we have a good stable of volunteers here at the center, we decided to do the work ourselves and save the $11,000. The foam cost $3,400. New windows, $3,700. Stucco materials, $7,500. Cellulose insulation for the attic was $900. Caulk and weather stripping, another $300. And other materials, $1,700. Totaled $17,500. According to the energy rating, based on fuel oil at $2.70 per gallon, the foam will save $1,175 per year, the windows will save $350 a year, the cellulose $250, weather stripping $550 per year, for a total savings of $2,325 yearly. At that rate, the retrofit will pay itself back in seven and a half years, and if the price of fuel goes up, the payback will be even faster than that. The loan we secured has a payment of approximately $175 monthly. So far, the Environmental Center has saved about 40% on its fuel usage over the same time period last year, which is a savings of over $200 per month. That's $25 a month more than our monthly payment. However, Phil Loudon says there's a bigger picture. You can't always look at payback. We're avoiding a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide emissions by making these improvements. We're reducing the carbon footprint that the center uh, had been uh, experiencing, I think that those are not just esoteric, they are absolutely necessary. So I believe that we're, we're seeing big gains in efficiency and reduction in carbon footprint. Overall, he says there is still room for improvement. And I think as we move on through winters like we've had just now, you'll find little areas that were missed and you'll be able to identify those uh, clearly and then seal them up when it warms up. But no, I think, I think the building is, you know, maybe not 100% better, but it's 80, 85. Good job. If you're interested in retrofitting your home or business, there are a number of agencies available to help you get started. They can get a lot of information from the Cold Climate Housing Research Center either through our website, cchrc.org, uh, or to visit the Research Center or call. We've got people that can answer their questions. People can see that just regular folks can actually do this through their own efforts, through volunteer labor, or through hiring a contractor to do the work for them. And approaching a bank for financing does not have to be a scary proposition. This is not, um, you know, a home equity line of credit borrowing against the house to, um, to vacation or to purchase other things or, I mean, this is, this is a loan expressly to save. Give us money at, you know, the terms you dictate so that we can save. And so I think that it's a conservative proposition that a lot of banks are going to look at and say, hey, if they're using a good, you know, good, do good dollars for their input, you know, good numbers for what they think the cost of oil is going to be, they're going to be able to repay the interest and in principal on this loan from the savings. 
There are also state assistance programs where homeowners can earn a rebate for the improvements they make. For more information, visit the Portal on Retrofits, Training and Loans at www.cchrc.org slash portal. Good luck with your retrofit project. We'll see you next time.